Welcome back to my channel and to this next video of the KNX video series. We have now finally installed the EDS 6 as well as KNX Virtual. So therefore in this video we want to start to work with the EDS 6. So I am here on the desktop and as you can see I have created two shortcuts. First of all, one to the EDS 6 and one to KNX Virtual. But we will start with the EDS 6 for now. So I, therefore I will open it. And now the following window should appear if you haven't inserted a USB dongle with, for example, the professional license. In this window, you can log into your My KNX account. This is the case because it is announced that with later versions of the EDS 6, you can use so-called cloud licenses, which are bound to your MyKNX account. Therefore, you can then log in here to your MyKNX account and then it checks if you have a license. For now, this really doesn't make sense because there aren't cloud licenses available for now. Therefore, I click here on Run Demo. If you have inserted a USB dongle, well, then you should directly be prompted to this window. Now, this is the dashboard of the EDS 6. Therefore, let us take a look what we can find here. So, on top of here, you can find KNX related news. So, for example, new KNX devices or articles on the topic of KNX. Down below, you can find the projects that are attached to your EDS 6. In my case, I already have two projects here. In your case, if you have started the EDS 6 for the first time, there shouldn't be any project. And this really doesn't matter as we will create a project in a few moments. And if we click here on local projects, we can see all of them. So when you have more projects than can be shown here, you can find them if you click here on local projects. Down below here, we have the archive. So we can archive a project if we want it. And then, for example, if we made changes that didn't work, we can roll back to the archive that we created. On top here, you have a search bar where you can search for your projects, for example. And that's really it for this dashboard. Now, what I want to take a look at is the settings page. In the settings page, first of all, we see the current version of the EDS. In my case, I use the version 6.0.0. This might change at the time you are watching this video. So for example, you could use the version 6.1.0, etc. And you can also check here for updates. But the EDS 6 already checks for updates in the background when you start it. So you really don't have to do it as the EDS 6 will then prompt you to install the update. Then let us take a look at the other settings here. First of all, here, presentation. There you can change different settings, for example, how many undo levels you want. So how many steps you want to go back. Then you can insert your own logo for the reports that are automatically created. So the documentation of your KNX network. And then this shouldn't be checked for your case but I have enabled this prompt for project history. What that means is that when I close my project, I will get prompted to add an entry to my project history, where I simply write down which changes I have made. And I think this feature is pretty useful because for example, if you make changes to your KNX installation and you document it in this project history, then, for example, three months go by and you then return to those to this KNX installation and there seems to be problems after your last changes. Then you can quickly take a look at your project history and see which changes you made and what might be the cause of the problem. So this is why I have enabled it here so that I don't forget to add an entry to my project history. Then here under user interface, you can enable or disable these KNX news, for example, and that's really it to this page. Then under language, we can change the language of your EDS as well as the product language, which I will quickly change here to English. 
I will restart it later. And then here, this might be a little bit more interesting because here you can see the license the ADL6 is running on. Now in this case, I have started it as demo. When I now insert my USB dongle, you should see changes here. Now you can see I have inserted my USB dongle and therefore it shows me that this the KNX is now running under the professional license, which means I have unlimited access to the devices. There are two other licenses available for KNX. This is on the one hand the home license where you have can have up to 64 devices but it is limited to one line only. And then there also is the light version. The light version you can use for an unlimited amount of projects but there you are limited to 20 devices per line. Don't be worried. For this video series, we only need the demo version. This is fully sufficient for now. Then you can see here the EDS apps. EDS apps are add-ons to your EDS, which enables more functionality. So for example, here you can see the apps that are available by the KNX association. For example, an extended copy function or a project tracing, etc. And then there are also apps by other developers. For example, manufacturer of devices. So there you might have apps, for example, for DALI gateways to configure the DALI line or update apps to update the KNX devices. You can find them all in the My KNX shop and there there are free apps and also paid apps, which you first of all have to buy to use it. So in this case, all those KNX association apps, as you can see here, need a license, so therefore you have to buy it. Then the next page is also really important. This is the online catalog. The online catalog was introduced with the EDS5 and makes your life much easier. Because before the online catalog was available, in order to use KNX devices in your project, you first of all had to download the product catalog by the manufacturer and you had to manually install it into your EDS. And you also had to check for updates frequently. With the online catalog, this isn't necessary anymore because the online catalog automatically checks if there are updates available and you can then simply download the devices that you need from this online catalog. In my case, I have set the market to Germany and I have also checked this option here so that the online catalog automatically checks for updates. In your case, there might be a button which you have to press in order to download the online catalog or check the online catalog for the first time. But be sure to enable the online catalog as well as those automatic updates. Then we have the data storage. So here we can specify how many restore points we want. After each time we close a project, a restore point is created, which we can roll back the project to. Of course, the more restore points you create, the more storage is needed. Then you can specify the path of the project archive. Then we have some troubleshooting, which you only need really if you have problems with the EDS and the support of KNX advises you to use this tool. Then what also is pretty useful is the shortcuts page. Here you can check for shortcuts that are available and which you might want to use. And that's really it for the settings page. So I will close it for now. And what I want to do now is that I want to create my first KNX project. Therefore, I click here on the plus sign new project. The first thing I can do here is I can specify a name. So for example, industry building. Then I can specify the project type. Now this doesn't change anything to the functionality. This simply is to make sure that you can find your projects faster. So I'll, I'll keep it to other commercial. Then I can specify the backbone media type. I stick here to IP, but you could also change it to twisted pair if necessary. Then this mark I also keep checked. Then this box I also keep checked so that the EDS6 will automatically create the line 1.1. 1 
and there the media type I can specify to twisted pair. And down below here, you can specify the group address style. Remember, group addresses have their own ID and there you have the option to either use a two level group address style, a three level group address style or even a free style. I like the three level approach because there I have more options to sort my group addresses. Therefore, I will stick to three level and then I will create my project. And now you can see the project window. But at the project window, we will take a look in the next video. What I want to do now is that I want to go back to the dashboard. Therefore, I click here on plus to get back here to overview. And then I can go back to my project, etc. And there I want to see which settings we have for a project. So therefore, I go here to details. And now here in details, you can change project related settings. So for first of all, you can set a project image to find your projects more quickly. Then you can set a status. So for example, when the project is finished, you can go here to delivered. I will keep to start. Then you see some statistics and here you can add a few tags. These tags are also only there that you can find your projects more quickly. Then I can see if I have created an archive to this project. This isn't the case. And then here under details, if I click on it, we have a few more settings. So for example, I can set up a project and contract number as well as a description. This is also only for the documentation. So when you later on create the documentation for the project as for example, a PDF, then you will see the project number, contract number and the description. Then we can set a project password. I won't use it for now. But for example, when you use Canix Secure, you have to set a project password. Then there is the BCU key. Now I wouldn't recommend to use it. It might sound pretty cool because the BCU key means that you can only download changes to your devices when you have the BCU key. But if you have forgotten it or lost the project, well, then the only chance to make changes to your project is to send the devices back to the manufacturer so that they can restore the manufacturer settings so that there isn't a BCU key set. Therefore, I don't use it in my projects. Then we can change the group address style later on, but make be sure that when I want to change it, you can see that the EDS informs me that all the group addresses which are already created will get lost. Therefore, you should decide when you create your project, which style you want to use and don't change it later on. Then we have some compatibility options, which I won't go into much detail for now. Let us go back. Here we have the security page where we then see all the devices that use Canix Secure with their keys and their serial number. I don't use it for now. And then what I find also pretty cool is here this attachments window. There we can add, for example, PDF documents like the manual of the devices or documentations of the electrical installation as a PDF or image, etc. And then we have all the documentation in one place, all within the EDS 6. And then here you can see the history, which is empty for now. But if I close my project, because I have set the setting, it will prompt me to enter a project log entry, which I will do now. So I will write down project created, also in the title, click OK. And if I go now back to the details, I can see here is my project history. Now for this project, this isn't really useful, but if we have a project with a lot of changes, this is a really handy tool, which you can use. So this was a lot of new information about the EDS. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, consider a like and subscribe to the channel to get notified for new videos. In the next video, we want to take a look at the project window and there insert our first KNX devices. So I'm excited to see you in the next video. So